So why are my reports showing unassigned traffic? Who are these users? And how can I solve this group? Welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. I believe analytics is for everyone. I'm convinced it can help you make better decisions in your daily work. And today we're gonna to talk about traffic sources. And specifically, we're going to talk about unassigned traffic. I will give you a clear and easy process on how you can solve this. And before we do that, I'm gonna go over some foundational principles, some core concepts in GA4 that you need to know before you understand what needs to happen. If you're already familiar with these concepts, feel free to skip ahead. I will add chapter markers, so skipping ahead should be easy. All right, let's go. So first of all, let's talk about how GA4 handles incoming traffic. Well, all incoming traffic, every user that lands on your, on your site will be classified into a channel group. And you will find that in GA4. You can find traffic sources by going into reports and then clicking acquisition and traffic acquisition. And for every user that comes into your site, a traffic source will be recorded. And if a user comes to your site, for instance, three, four, three or four times, uh, for every session that the user performs, a traffic source will be recorded here. And it can be all sorts of things. For instance, direct traffic, organic search, page search. And here I also see unassigned traffic. Well, how does GA4 decide where users end up? Well, an important signal are the session and medium fields. And you can see the session and medium fields that are recorded in GA4 by clicking here. Session source slash medium. And these two fields are really important because they dictate for a big part how the session is classified in your default channel group report. Um, and the, the medium group describes what type of channel was used. So for instance, organic, medium organic, says something about there was a search engine used and people clicked on an organic result. Uh, CPC is a, a paid click, so cost per click. And referral is also a very common one. It's when, for instance, a blog or a site writes an article and in that article there's a link to your site and people click that link. That, that, that traffic will be classified as referral traffic. So the medium field describes what kind of channel was used for people to enter in. The source field further specifies that. So for instance, with organic traffic, you will have the source field telling you what kind of search engine was used. And for instance here, organic traffic by Google, and here is organic traffic by Baidu. And here's organic traffic with Bing. And with referral traffic, you will see the domain that forwarded the traffic to your site. So the medium field specifies what kind of channel was used, for instance, organic search. And the source field further specifies what kind of search engine in this case was used. So in this case, Google. So as a bonus tip, there's also a third field that you need to know about and that you can find that under the plus sign if you look for campaign. So I'm gonna use session campaign. For important and usually paid channels, for instance here, Google CPC, if I search for CPC, you have the option to further specify what, um, what campaign was used in that channel. So in Google CPC, there are different campaigns live. And here you can further specify what, what's the, what the performance is of, say, campaign A versus campaign B. So I'm going to leave it here. It's a small bonus tip uh, uh, and really important if you want to analyze, for instance, uh, Google Ads campaigns. But also you can use this field to analyze the performance of different newsletters that you've sent out in the past couple of months. So let's go back into our discussion around traffic sources. Um, especially on large sites, and especially if you look into a large time frame, for instance, the last 12 months that I selected here, uh, the list of traffic sources here is really long. So here it's 96, but I've seen sites that had a couple of hundred tra different traffic sources. And because that's a little bit too big, Google already tries to classify and group different traffic sources together. Um, so it will take these, this data and turn it into session default channel group. And here we have only 14 groups. This is a nice way to kind of filter out certain details and just give you a big picture overview of what 
channels are performing the best on your site. And this is also where unassigned traffic shows up. Before we can go deeper into how you can solve this, we first need to talk about UTM tags. So please be patient for a little longer. We're gonna get there, but first we're gonna talk about UTM tags. So I've already mentioned that the source and medium fields are a, a, an important way for Google Analytics 4 to, to kind of classify the traffic into the, the channel groups. And the, the source and medium fields are set automatically unless you're, you will override it yourself. And in most cases, GA4 does a pretty good job of classifying and, and filling in these fields. So for instance, on search engines, Google will recognize that traffic and classify it into uh, Google slash organic or Bing slash organic. Also with referral traffic, Google does a great job of classifying that traffic. But there are certain cases where GA4 does not work very well with automatic classification of traffic. And there are a, a couple of channels that are known for this. For instance, email traffic. Email traffic is very hard to classify by Google Analytics. And also your paid social campaigns are impossible to classify correctly by uh, Google Analytics. So if you use these two channels, you will need to use UTM tags or kind of override the channel that they are classified in, in GA4. And this is how it works. So let's say I wanna set up an email and I want people to click in, on a link that goes into my website, into the contact page. And I want this to show up in my reports as medium email. And I want the source to be newsletter. So in GA4, under session, source medium this will show up as a newsletter slash email so for instance if i click the, that link today and i'm the only one i will see one user and one session and of course if i uh, fill out the contact form i will see also one conversion and this is the this is so this is the goal well if i if i do nothing and i just use this link this is not going to happen if people use this link from their, uh, from their browser, for instance, if you uh, use Gmail, you will be redirected into mail.google.com slash referral. So you will be redirected to mail.google.com. And if you click the link, GA4 will think it's, an, it's a referring site. So instead of channel email, it will classify it as referral. So instead of people that use it, use Gmail to open the link, um, it will be classified as referral traffic from mail.google.com. And of course, if it, people use live mail, it will show up as mail.live.com slash referral. But also if people use some kind of app on their uh, phone or on their laptop um, and people click the link from that email, the app will go to the background, a browser will be opened. In that browser, the link will be opened. And GA4 cannot see that there was an app that, op that caused this page to open. So GA4 will think that people type that link indirectly. So that traffic will show up as direct none in your reports. So instead of the one nice row with all users, if you send out an email without UGM tags, GA4 will try to guess it and will guess it wrong. And the traffic will show up under different traffic sources. So we need to add UGM tags to this link in order to override the default and to set the, the source and medium fields correctly. You can set up UGM tag by using the campaign builder. I will put a link in the description. And the URL builder consists of a couple of fields. And the first field is your landing page. So I, I want to forward people to this page. I'm gonna fill it in here. Then there are three mandatory fields. So the first mandatory field is source, second is medium, and the third is campaign name. So for source, I'm gonna use newsletter because that's what I decided on in my plan. So the second field I'm gonna to set to email because that's the campaign type, the, the channel type that, that we're using. So the third field, the campaign name field, you can use that to further specify what type of email was, uh, was used. So for instance, the subject line of the field or the campaign name that you use in your email program, those are really great uh, campaign names to use because it allows you to later on find out specifically for that email, 
what was the performance of that. For now, I'm just going to leave it blank to keep it really simple. So below the form, there will be an, a new URL that you can copy. And I'm going to copy that into my doc document so we can compare and see what the difference is. So I've pasted the new URL into my document and you will see that the beginning of the URLs is exactly the same as the URL that we started with. But after the URL, there are, in this case, two parameters, UTM source and UTM medium. Source is set to newsletter, medium is set to email. And by using this link in my email instead of this link, when people click that link, they will not be set to the default source medium, but the default channel groups will be overridden with the text I've set. So in this way, I can override and I can decide myself how I want the traffic to show up in my reports. So let's look into another example. For instance, Facebook ads. Let's say you want to set up a campaign in Facebook and you want people to land on exactly the same URL. So what happens if you use just this URL in your reports? Well, in, the, in your reports, you will find facebook.com slash referral because GA4 sees people clicking in from facebook.com into your site and will think it's referral traffic. Well, at least you will see the amount of people that come from Facebook into your site, but you cannot differentiate between your paid search efforts and your organic search efforts. So it would be an improvement to see this traffic coming in in a different channel. For instance, Facebook slash CPC. So if we want to have the, the Facebook campaign on the, its own row in GA4 and not the, the default facebook.com slash referral, we would need to add UTM text to the link in our ad campaign. So we're back into our campaign URL builder. I'm gonna go use exactly the same landing page, but this time I'm not going to add UTM text for an email, but I'm going to add them for a social media campaign, specifically a Facebook campaign, and the campaign is set to CPC. So if I filled out this form, Again, there will be a new URL generated under the form. If I copy that and I paste it in my document, we can see the differences with our regular URL. So I've pasted it in. Here's the regular URL and here's the URL with the UTM tags. And again, there are two tags added to this URL, a UTM source field with the value of Facebook and a UTM medium field with the value of CPC. If I use this URL in my campaigns, people will click on it and will land on that page. It will look exactly the same, but GA4 will override the default channels and will set it to whatever value I've, uh, I've picked in my UTM tag. So in this case, Facebook CPC. So now we've covered some core concepts. We can go in and see how we can solve unassigned traffic in GA4. So here we have the documentation of GA4. And in this documentation, you'll find all the rules that, that GA4 applies before it classifies traffic in its uh, channel group. So for instance, email. GA4 will classify traffic as email if either source or medium have uh, the, that field set to email or e-mail or e underscore mail or e space mail. So you, you need your emails to have either the source field or the medium field to have this field. If you just would use mail, it would not end up in email, but it would end up in an assigned. So you need to follow the specification in order to have that traffic assigned to the proper group. Also paid social. GA4 will put traffic in the group paid social if your source matches a list of social sites. So for instance, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, you could go on and on. And media matches uh, a list of rules. So for instance, CPC would work or a medium of retargeting would work, or a medium of paid would work. You can choose uh, one of those values, but you would need to follow this specification. So for instance, if you would use source Facebook, but you would use a medium, for instance, ads, the word ads is not in this list. And if you would use those tags, it would not end up in the group paid social, it would end up in the group unassigned. So if you want traffic to end up in a certain group, you need to go into this documentation and look what tags you need to apply to that traffic. So the downside of this method is if you get it working today, if you um, clarify your UTM tags according to the documentation today, from today on, the traffic will be classified in the reports uh, automatically. But what if you want to analyze the unassigned traffic that you've had in the past? Well, you can do the following things. So let's go in. So we're back in our reports. So if you want to investigate your unassigned traffic, you can go into this report and click the plus sign 
and select session source medium. And I'm going to filter down this report into an assigned so I can see only an assigned traffic. So if you've incorrectly used UTM tags in the past, you will see those UTM tags show up here. In this case, no UTM tags were set up at all. And in that case, usually there's some kind of measurement error uh, that's, uh, that's preventing GA4 from recording any uh, traffic source at all. But if you have UTM tags that were set incorrectly, so then they were not set according to the documentation, you will find that here and you know what traffic sources you will need to fix. So that's it for today. This is how you find out what traffic was classified as unassigned and how you can solve it all together. I hope this video was helpful and clear to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Also, please leave a thumbs up and have a great day. See you in the next video.